Hello, welcome back to our channel. So today I would figure I would go over all of the supplies that I use as a bag maker, a seamstress. Uh, we won't get into the nitty gritty, but I will show you what I use, some of the things I could not live without. As I've been doing this going on five years now, I think almost coming up on six years. <laughs> It's been a while and I've collected a lot of tools and there are things that I've realized I don't need but I necessarily need and some things that you know you could get away from not using I will point out some of the places that I did to get my materials from in case you want to go check them out and I will give you a quick rundown of some of the things I have in my sewing studio that just make sense and make it easier so the first thing that I'm going to show you are some of the storage items that I use and some of the other items that I might use to make me a successful bag maker. I think that I'm successful. <laughs> so we'll just jump right on into that and then we will also look at some of the materials I have laid out on the table and show you what I use. First up is my storage or, uh, for my zippers. Don't worry where I cut it right there. Um, this used to hang on a much smaller door, but I didn't want to buy a new one. So this is a shoe organizer you can get from Walmart, Amazon, Target, anywhere. I think even Dollar General sells them. And then I just organize my zippers by color. And as you could tell, I'm running out on some colors. But yes, it just hangs on the door. Uh, and store your zippers that way it's out of the way and they are I can see at a glance what I need next up is this cart that I roll around my desk it's just a storage cart I also have a ring camera stand on it for videos and it's actually come in handy this was the, one of the very first things I bought when I started sewing and as you could tell you could put everything in everything and anything in there and it also comes with accessories that you can hang stuff on next up is this other storage container it's the 10 drawer one that you can get from michael's and now walmart sells them if i was to get rid of everything in my studio but two things it would be my table and that i cannot live without that it holds all of my tools everything that i need to work at my table Next up is this other drawer that I got a few months ago and it holds all of my ready to be made cutouts that I have done for the week. It's a great storage um, idea if you cut out a lot of patterns but you don't really have the space to just have them thrown everywhere so you can just put them in there. So now those are just a few of the storage items which there's one more thing I forgot to show you that's actually right behind this camera and I'm going to just flip you around and show it because it is one of the best things that I have bought and my husband put up for me. It stores all of my hardware separately um, though I already need a new one and it just hangs on the wall. As you can see here it is. This holds the clips because this is my cutting table so I clip down my patterns and my pieces together so I just refill this when it's empty and this holds all of my hardware separated by type and by color and then I have a few that just holds miscellaneous it even holds rivets so yes I got this from Amazon for I believe $30 these just unclip and then you just hang them back up So the first item that I will go over is my heat press. I used to use an iron to iron all my interfacing down and it was okay because a heat press wasn't in my budget. But I strongly suggest if this is something that you want to do for a while, invest in a heat press. You can get a good one for $200 around about especially around Black Friday, which is coming up. So this is the swing, swing around 12 by 15.
and it has saved me so much time. You can also do, as you can see over here, heat transfer vinyl. You can do your interfacing. It just has so many uses. And this one actually came with attachments for a mug press, uh, heat press for your hats, and for plates. So as you can see here, I have laid out just about everything that I use um, to make bags every day. So we're just going to start from the left hand side and go towards the right. So as you can see right here, this is a pile of interfacing. We have foam and I get my foam. This is flex foam, one sided fusible from Walmart. And I always wait till they're having a sale for the full roll. But normally it's $7.97 a yard, but can't live without this to make structured bags. Next up is Decaville Light and Decaville Heavy. I get mine from GotInterfacing.com and I use Decaville Light in just about everything that I make. And Decaville Heavy I just use on the bottoms of my bags. But I cannot live without Decaville White. Next up is my Woven Fuse 2. Again, I get this from Got Interfacing. And this is actually six yards. It is completely worth the money. It is the best interfacing that I have seen. And I have used SF101. I've used them all. Um, if you cannot get... This from Got Interfacing, SF101, you can get from Walmart or Joann's, works just as well. It's just not as thick as Woven Fuse 2, but I will say you can interface this with an iron. She does send you instructions, but it is so much easier to interface with a heat press. So that's pretty much the interfacing that I use. Next up, we'll just go over through the tools. So. For the most part, I do have quite a few rulers. I have the main ones that I use are an eight and a half by eight and a half square ruler. I got this from Walmart. I have a 24 by six inch ruler. Again, I got this from Walmart. I have a 6x12 ruler. I got this from Amazon. It's an Ulfa ruler. And then I have a 6x1 ruler that I got from Amazon. It's an Omni Grid. Those four rulers I use every day in all of my bag making uh, cutouts. So the next thing is a rotary cut cutter and some scissors. Both of these I got from Walmart and the blades I get from Walmart. There is no need to go out to Joann's or somewhere fancy to buy your materials. These are very cost effective from Walmart or you can even find them on Amazon. Next up that I use is a lighter. I use this little bitty screwdriver for like zipper ends, uh, not zipper ends, yeah, the zipper caps, and what else do I use this for? Oh, tassel making, sorry, <laughs> my mind went blank. So I use this for tassel making. I actually got this from a thrift store. Do not sleep on thrift store when it comes to some of your sewing, sewing supplies. And then I have a marking pen. I got this one from Mormino.com, but you can get a friction pin, if I'm saying it correctly, from Amazon. And that is what you would search for is friction. F-R-I-X-I-O-N. The next thing that I cannot live without is double-sided tape. This is half inch and quarter inch. I get this from waywack.com. I used to make my straps without double-sided tape. I will not do it again. It just makes it life so much simpler. 
So again, from Waywack, you would do a search for leather tape. Next up, of course, I use a stapler. Some scissors, got these from Walmart. Now, the reason I have more than one pair is this is for cutting fabric at my cutting table. This is for cutting everything else at my sewing table. I have a hole punch for handles, for rivets. I got this from Amazon as well. I think all you would have to do is search for a leather hole punch. And then my clips. I got these hair clips from Walmart. And I got these from Amazon. These are great for just sliding off for thin materials like your linings. And then as you're sewing, you just slide them off. Okay, my thread, I get use 100% poly thread Selric. I get it from Amazon. I have tried many, many companies on thread, but my machine, I don't know if it's maybe just the settings that I have set for this thread, but it hates any other thread. So I get this from Amazon, they're $6 a roll, and I just use the basic colors. Okay, oh, and here's some edge paint, leather paint is what they call it, and I get this from Amazon as well, and I just got it in a box. This is not a need. I got it because everybody seems to be into this whole edge paint thing. I'm not impressed. Too much work. So then, here recently I've really gotten into hang tags for my bags. I got these from Warehouse Industries. They came in a pack of 25 for $13. So there's, so in these, they come with the hang tag themselves. These little hanging ball and chains I got from Amazon, a hundred pack for like less than 10 bucks. I make my own ribbon, uh, tags for the inside of my bags using sublimation and I can make a video on that at a later date. So let's go through the hardware. I get my hardware from a ton of different places but the the if oh I am so sorry. So my hardware comes from many different places, just depends on who's having a sale or what mood I'm in for the most part. But if anything else fails, I will get my hardware from Amazon. Don't sleep on it because if you read the reviews, look at previous purchases from different people, you can find some good hardware, especially if you're just starting out. I get all of my magnetic snaps from Amazon, period. They have... Gunmetal, antique, and silver. And that's pretty much all you need. If I do need rainbow, then I look at uh, mormino.com and what's the other one? Blue Cala and a couple other places. But this is from Amazon, this clip. So I get my silver from Amazon because they I've never had problems with these. I like the look and they are cheaper. This is from Mormino. I do like the thickness of it. They can be a little bit pricey though. Now for the square rings though, as you can tell, this one is from Amazon and this one is from Mormino as you can tell the difference. Amazon, more me know. So just keep an eye on that. Um, depend on the style that you want. The rainbow hardware, I usually just try and find the best place that I can get it from. Uh, whereas Etsy, my handmade space does sell hardware also. 
um, just wherever I can get it that's cheaper, but I don't lose the quality. I also use back, uh, back feet. Um, I also shop around for these as well. And key fob hardware. Again, don't sleep on Amazon. I've bought my key fob hardware from Amazon for as long as I can remember. I've never had problems. Now, as far as rivets go, I have tried many different companies for rivets and I can tell you moremeknow.com is my favorite place to buy rivets. It They have the link that I need and nine times out of 10, they always have the color that I need. Okay, so for my straps, if I make them out of webbing, then I'm going to use Amazon and I get this, it's propylene nylon webbing. It's like 10 yards for less than $10. I love it and I use it in all my crossbody straps. For zippers, again, don't sleep on Amazon. This rainbow zipper is from, well, it doesn't tell me who it's from, but it's 10 yards. It comes with zipper heads, and it was less than $15, and it comes in this box. I've gotten it in black, purple, and pink. They don't have every color but they have like black because I could always just use black rainbow. And they come with nice big zipper heads. But if I don't buy them from Amazon, I buy my zipper tape from myhandmadespace.com. There are so many companies that sell zipper tape. I have bought from others before, but my go-to is myhandmadespace.com. I cannot stress them enough. They sell hardware, which I love their hardware as well, but I love their zipper tape and their zipper pulls. Okay, and they sell, here's one of their zipper pulls. I'm not big and fancy. I don't do specialty zipper pulls unless I already have an idea in mind. So for the most part, I get the donut zipper pulls. Okay, let's talk faux leather. I've been really into faux leather a lot and there are quite a few places that I get it from. So my croc vinyl, I can get it in just about any color I can imagine from Big Z's Fabric. Um, they have an Etsy store and a website. Word of caution, when you, if you shop through their website, the, they charge you for shipping on each piece and then they refund your shipping. I don't know if they changed that practice, but last time I bought from them, that's what they did. And it can be quite pricey, but you get a large piece and the prices for the yard is very decent. So that's where I get all of my croc faux leather, faux leather from. Now my basic marine vinyl colors, like this tea, um, aqua, black and brown I get from Joann's when they have a sale. So you can get, if you wait for their 50% off, you can get a yard of their marine vinyl for $10. And that's what I do. I just get the brown, the black, and the teal for that though, from Joann's. Now I, start, I ordered from a new company and I really love it. I love the price. I think it was only like $20 for a whole yard and it's custom. And this is actually the pebble faux leather and it's rainbow fabrics and or rainbows fabric. And I really love them. They have a Facebook group. They only open up custom orders once a week. The biggest place though I get my faux leather is from bodio.com and if you've ever seen any of my videos, you know I love them. I love their faux leather, I love their prices, I love their shipping, I love the owner. She is such a nice lady, she is so personable and I, 
she is the number one place I shop for faux leather. So that's Bodio. The other place that I get some of my faux leather now, if I want something unique that I can't find anywhere else, is my Punk Broidery. As you can see, this shimmer. And that's my Punk Broidery is where I got this. Now, I also do shop around for specialty printed faux leather. I got, honestly, I can't remember where I got this. I've had it for a while. But shop around a lot of Facebook groups are, if they sell fabric, they sell specialty faux leather as well, for the most part. So yeah, I just shop around for that. For my plain colors, I get, or, you know, something just, it's just one color I get from Bodio. My prunk bordery for anything I want a little bit of uniqueness and then I just shop around for any printed faux leather now let's talk about interfacing ah, I'm not interfacing I'm sorry lining the only thing I use for lining is waterproof canvas so you don't have to interface it and it comes at a reasonable pro reasonable price I get my blue black red and green from Walmart because it's four dollars a yard it's not as heavy as otter Tech's, but it works just the same i get all of my other colors from fabric wholesale direct so that's all i use for my lining now last but not least is my fabric i have been designing a lot of my own fabric and again i get them either from rainbows fabric or spoon flower I also, the Fabric Candy Shop, that's where I used to always buy my fabric until I ventured out, but they are reasonably, I mean, reasonably priced for a whole yard. They have different unique fabrics for all kinds of tastes, and it's the Fabric Candy Shop, and they have a website and a Facebook group. And then last but not least is my favorite, favorite fabric shop of all, and it's Blended threads they're a canadian based company and it is a pre-order fabric website though sometimes they have retail but they have just so many down to earth fabric choices and i love all of their fabrics that they have and that's blended threads so yes oh and i did want to say that if you want like okay i showed you the storage for all of the fabric cutouts but if you buy these you can get them from dollar tree you can get them from michael's they also come in this this right here these are a great way to store your hardware for each pattern as you can see right here this is the hardware I was using for a pattern that I sewed up yesterday. So that's just an idea as well. So thank you and I hope that I was able to help you in some way of things that you know you can use in your bag making adventure. I will do a recap of things that absolutely cannot go without for bag making. Of course, it's your thread. I get mine from Amazon. Um, it Rotary cutter from Walmart. Scissors from Walmart. You can use any scissors. They don't have to be fancy. You can get some Dollar General scissors. Uh, a leather hole punch I ordered from Amazon. My vinyl I get from Bodio. Uh, you can get fabric from anywhere. Uh, and I didn't mention it, but my cutting mat that you saw all of my hardware on, I got that from Walmart as well, and I have two of those. I have a big one and a, a medium-sized one. All of my rulers I got from Walmart, and I used four, the 8.5 by 8.5, the 1 by 6, the 24 by 6, and the 12 by 6. And I'm sorry, let me back up. I got two of those from Amazon and two of those from Walmart. Uh the double-sided tape from waywack.com. You can look up leather tape. 
And if you can only purchase one roll, I would go with the half inch. I hardly use my quarter inch, but I go through a half inch roll at least one a month. Uh, your zippers, my handmade space, I can't promote them enough. Um, I love them. And Amazon, hardware, Amazon, or More Me Know, or My Handmade Space, or Bags by Cat. Actually, I think she has a new name. So I will put the new name with the link down below. And, but yeah, that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions, oh, and the interfacing, gotinterfacing.com. They're amazing. But if you can't afford it or you need it now, Walmart and Joann's. Walmart has SF-101 that has Peltex and it has foam. Those are the three things that you can use for all of your bags. You don't have to have the special interfacing to make a good bag. You don't have to spend a lot of money to make good bags. You can build it up as you go. So I hope this helped anybody. If not, I'm sorry. Um, if you have any questions or want to see how something works or me to go into more detail, please let me know below in the comments. And I really appreciate you joining me on this. And if you haven't yet and would like to, please like and subscribe our, to our channel and we would really appreciate it. So until next time, thank you for joining me.